for our meeting first. So okay. Yeah, and the um, second participant uh, from um, uh, Denmark Embassy, who is the executive director of the Innovation Center uh, Denmark in Korea. Uh, his name is Peter, Mr. Peter uh, Bengsubo, and uh, he is currently connected from uh, Copenhagen. And that's a uh, very uh, appreciate uh, for your joining. Can you just and, briefly hi? Uh, yeah. I just want to I just want to say sorry for 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 the delay uh, this afternoon uh, with IT issues. I'm I'm terrible sorry to to let you waiting for 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 15 minutes. Thank you so much. It, uh, it, I think uh, there always there is a sort of a problem like that. Also. Um, uh, Dr. Uh, Hyungu Kim, who is a chief of a new and renewable energy resource map laboratory of the Korea Institute of Energy Research. And he's currently also a vice president of uh, Korea Wind Energy Association uh, of uh, Korean Solar Energy Society. Also, he's currently editor in chief of new and renewable energy. So um, I'm really happy to accommodate uh, Dr. Kim too. Well, hello. It's nice to see you. Very great to see you. Um, uh, myself, um, associate professor uh, from University of Buffalo, the State University of New York, and also as um, adjunct associate professor of Southern National University. And also, I'm currently uh, editor in chief of Asian Journal of Innovation and Policy. I'm very happy uh, to um, organize and moderator uh, moderating uh, this. Um, uh, interesting session. So today, uh, actually, we are um, uh, doing for the Korean Danish Living Lab Network, and this is the kickoff meeting. And from uh, next year, uh, we will accommodate um, uh, many uh, uh, practical and um, expertise in in uh, Living Lab uh, 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 groups in Korea, uh, especially in Daejeon area, and also uh, Denmark, especially the Copenhagen area. And today's uh, theme is how to approach to the Korean Green New Deal. So um, three um, expertise today and invitees uh, will uh, uh, and introduce, uh, for example, the first president to call, what is the Living Lab Network in South Korea, and what would be the future strategies. So he will explain that part. And also, uh, the, Mr. Vanksbo uh, from uh, Copenhagen uh, will explain uh, the Korean Danish Living Lab Alliance. So uh, he prepared a, a huge and a lot of pages, slides of uh, PowerPoints. I'm really, really happy to read it and uh, a lot of good examples. So we can see how the, the current uh, Denmark's uh, Danish uh, Living Lab uh, is currently working. Uh, finally, uh, uh, Dr. Kim. Uh, will um, uh, present about national positioning of uh, care toward the Korean uh, Green New Deal and also uh, the CARES uh, international network. So uh, that would be really uh, uh, insightful uh, to our uh, uh, preparation of a Korean Danish um, living name network. So, um, um, uh, as I circulated about our event summary, that would be uh, uh, already explained uh, about our background and the target, and uh, as I mentioned uh, about our purpose of uh, this network. So this event proposes simultaneous online and offline event today and next year too, and we wanted to build and initiate the Korean Danish Living Name Network for Science and Technology. We call this is a Kodan Lilanet. And the, the purpose is how to um, uh, establish this network to exchange new ideas from the network participants. Also, we want to introduce both countries living net projects together uh, to encompass uh, various local areas in Korea and Denmark to each other. And uh, we wanted to uh, accommodate the ideas together. And also, we want to extend that ideas to be a huge uh, uh, lab uh, experiments uh, by applying the science and technologies. Also, we wanted to compare key features and characteristics and wanted to identify 
uh, commonalities when executing living lab projects based on different contexts and environments. So we wanted to, um, be, uh, using this network, uh, seek unique living lab business proposal, proposals uh, corresponding to the Korean New Deal and also um, another uh, insight from uh, Denmark. So uh, that, would, that would be really valuable to explore the possibility of expanding our network to the EU and also many other Asian countries. Um, and even uh, we already discussed uh, another uh, participants from the United States and Russia. So um, other Nordic countries would be another uh, our collaborating uh, team. So I hope uh, our videos plus uh, we will uh, publish um, also Korean and English books based on the, our our effort uh, today and also um, the January effort. So hopefully uh, this is really um, insightful to our Korean um, and, and, and Denmark uh, uh, the, the projects uh, who, uh, who, which is conducted by our um, the, uh, the Living Lab uh, participants. So first, um, uh, please, President Go, can you explain your preparation slides? Okay. So, um, President Ho will start his pro uh, presentation. I'm very much pleased to join the kickoff meeting for the building the Korean Danish Living Name Network, uh, including majorly the Green New Deal um, programs or projects based on the citizen participants. Um, I'm going to make a presentation about uh, Living Name Network, actually evolution of Living Name Network in Korea and the uh, Daejeon sta status. Uh, okay, can you show my presentation material? It, it is the first time efforts to meet by this online platform in this tab here. Um, so the Murepa set this platform today. So there may be some solving issues. So uh, currently, uh, the uh, our the, the this Korean, Denmark, Danish Lilanet. Living Lab Network activities um, wanted to apply science and technology actively, and um, we wanted to um, uh, accommodate uh, many local uh, uh, participants and project teams to our network, especially starting from Daejeon. So this is a really a great opportunity by corresponding to the uh, Korean Green New Deal. Um, currently, uh, we are trying to hear um, the, uh, the our system with the PowerPoint in the system. So, um, can I can I just mention one yeah. thing in sure. in the meantime? Right. Yeah, right. That's very good. Um, I, first of all, I I'm 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 very very grateful for uh, for for you taking your time to. To meet and to discuss this uh, during this uh, kickoff meeting, Living Labs. Um, I've been working with that for 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 around ten years, and it's it's uh, ha it has been striking when I'm speaking with cities that they reinvent the same mistake again and again and again. And what we have discovered is um, that it cost a lot of money to do the same mistake, and. The, the knowledge sharing, these type of alliance have not exist until for a few years ago. And I think with us sharing our different experience from different cultures, from different regions, we can save money. We can do our living labs more efficient. We can accelerate the, the research and the innovation acceleration or the adaptation of technologies. So, so this is not just a, a kind of a talking club. This is, this is about money. This is about how we accelerate the transition in cities. 
And I think the mindset between the Danes and the Koreans, between our cities, between our decision makers are quite aligned. So I see a lot of, um, of mutual interest in this. I've been talking with cities in, uh, in Denmark, Eile, Aarhus, Copenhagen. They are all very, very eager to come out to Korea to see how digitalization, how renewable energy, how cities are planned and designed and how they work with innovation. They're equally interested to open up for Korean delegation to come to, to Denmark to learn from our, um, our experience. So I really, really hope that this will be possible to create a platform where we share knowledge and experience, where we share technologies and where we together really put the, um, put the technologies to life through these uh, living lab. So I, 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 it was just important for me to, to, to tell you that, that, that this is uh, from the Danish government side uh, and network which have their full attention and we have budget and commitment to make it long term. And of course, we can do a lot of preparation and talking and publication, but I really want to, um, to be able to work in one to one with the technologies, try to test and validate them in real life. And especially trying to work with the living labs where we are seeing a kind of a triple helix approach where we work with technologies but and society and of course always focusing on the bottom line of our work this is the only driver of innovation that's the financially part the business models and i think together in dialogue we can accelerate these business model and scale them out for the mutual benefit of both our countries. Very good. Yeah, we totally agree on, on your opinion. Uh, <laughs> that's a great. Yeah, this is a, it, it. Uh, okay. I, I'm going to make a presentation about the uh, Korea's living nap. Uh, titled Living Lab Evolution in Korea and Future Strategies, including Daejeon's Network Status. Okay, um, I think uh, we are considering Living Lab as a new research and innovation model in Korea. Um, especially, we are focusing on the paradigm shift in research innovation policy, especially since 2010s, the innovation policy uh, version three is to considering a local and social demand oriented innovation, um, including the technology um, social system and uh, uh, evolving uh, and making the evolution of local and um, social innovation in Korea. Of course, now the, the such kinds of innovation policies shifting uh, to another paradigm for innovation policy version four, uh, trying to build, to build a, a platform, especially region-led inclusive innovation. It's Korean uh, situation as well. And also, that, that's why we need an integrated approach of technology, industry, and social policy innovation altogether. Um, so far, Korean government and society trying to focus on the economic and the industry um, aspects of technological development and innovation, especially focusing on the relationship between industry and uh, technology. But now, 
uh, we are changing our focusing point to the relations between technology and innovation and society. So, uh, but I think we need to build an integrated approach for the next evolution of technology, industry, social policy innovation. Um, and uh, another aspect is that the R&D paradigm is shifting to the research and solution development. Um, government trying to invest more and more um, social problem solving R&D program, um, especially uh, using uh, living labs as a new approach. And also uh, many civil society and communities trying to uh, make an effort to solve um, such kinds of community problem or city issues uh, by, by the citizen driven problem solving um, innovation. Uh, including social innovation movement. So um, Korean government and society especially think, uh, th thinking about the R&D uh, by the expertise or professors or researchers. But now they are changing their mind. The R&D is important to participate the citizen and uh, to solve uh, social issues. So the paradigm of R&D is shifting to research and solution development, um, making a new uh, participants of citizens. Um, the that's why the government pro government many government departments try to establish or develop a new programs based on the such kinds of RNSD uh, paradigm uh, by the Ministry of Science and ICT and also these kinds of uh, Songnam city is one of the main, main cities in Korea. Uh, the city itself try to focus on the new approaches to solve uh, the local issues and also digital social innovation program by Ministry of the Interior and Safety. And another program is evolving by citizen, so-called citizen-driven problem solving. Uh, for example, energy transition by Songde Gol uh, for the sustainable transition lab. Songdaegol is one of the main, main uh, local communities. And also patient expert to treat the diabetes uh, by uh, citizen or patients itself, themselves. Well, also the community care system is evolving by citizen and patients or local uh, activities, acti activists. Okay, uh, those kinds of um, government department efforts and the RNSD investment or citizen driven living net programs, uh, we are establishing the Korean networks of living labs uh, since the middle of 2010s. And uh, nowadays, there are five or six uh, regions participating the Korean networks of living labs. And also there are so many sector networks by universities and cities and government research institutes. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the, in the case of Daejeon city, actually uh, Daejeon city is the first city to do the living lab project in Korea. Uh, that's why we think uh, 
uh, Daejeon city uh, is a hot spot of the living labs in Korea's network. Uh, and nowadays, uh, we are expanding our living lab projects and connecting many organizations. So we are building a new um, living lab networks in Daejeon city, um, building themselves the next agendas and projects of living labs. Uh, now, now uh, is, uh, nowadays there are 19 project living lab projects, and in the network, Daejeon Net Living Lab Network, there are 34 uh, organizations are participating. Okay, and also we are um, establishing the new maps to make uh, make. An uh, make the new, new networks uh, by uh, increasing uh, actors from industry and uh, universities and the r and public r and clusters and local government and citizen as well. In Daejeon city, uh, there are tw the r and cluster. In terms of r and cluster, there are uh, 26 national research institutes 11 public research institutes and also 21 universities in Daejeon city and 1.47 million people or population or the local government there are nearly 8000 people uh, government uh, local government officials and also on 100,000 um, more than 100,000 companies to be able to participate the living labs in Daejeon city. So this step um, is going to review the major actors and projects and networks to, to, evolve, to make an evolution to the next step, uh, leaving them networks or uh, paradigm shift in R&D or innovation in Daejeon city. Um, one of our, our ideals is to establish eye-to-eye, -to -eye, innovation to innovation platform. Uh, we could collect many ideas and uh, demands from uh, universities and communities or public sectors uh, using the blockchain uh, platform. And after that, we could connect science and technology to the ideals and the curating uh, stage we could uh, plan uh, new um, agendas or business modeling or and uh, startups joint ventures and market i think uh, living labs could um, uh, have a major role to build uh, such kinds of uh, new startups and the market uh, based on the living them networks. And also we are focusing on the, we are thinking about the new platform for convergence, innovation and diffusion. It's a circular or sustainable system for catalyzing the convergence and diffuse the new value, social value. I think a living labs could contribute for the, the for the evolution of these kinds of platform convergence and diffusion platform for next step innovation and creating new values. Okay, this um, okay, it's all I had to say. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, President Cole. Um, this is. Uh, uh, really a strong uh, summary about the Dejan's strategy for the future uh, living lab network. So um, I would like to uh, 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 transfer my uh, uh, speak to uh, uh, Mr. Bengswell uh, regarding uh, the introduction of uh, uh, the Copenhagen and Dem Danish's um, uh, living lab network and the, the, uh, the green and circular economy things. So can you uh, start? Okay, and would it be shown on the screen? Yeah, uh, very soon. Just uh, 
And in the meantime, perhaps in the meantime, I can just uh, really uh, say to to President Ko that uh, that it's an impressive uh, presentation. It's a pre impressive uh, ecosystem you have in 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 Dajun. To see all the universities, to see the the civil society groups and the private sector. Have you? Have you kind of uh, already now been communicating with potential investors to perhaps make these uh, living labs possible? Yeah, we are uh, connecting many community organizations and universities and companies and the local government officials and also the youth community. Uh, yeah. in, in the field of startups. So we are um, categorizing five or six sectors and then uh, select some representative um, organizations or experts or civil communities. And then uh, already uh, they are joining the network or to, c to create uh, new agendas or new next uh, living net programs. And the local government officials to think uh, is thinking about the new uh, projects or many organizations who is able to develop new funding uh, yeah. so we are, we are connecting uh, together to create come up with new agendas and new funding sources uh, based on the new projects uh, uh, yeah. Including the Green New Deal is a quite big um, session for us to develop yes. uh, next time. Yeah. Okay. In uh, in Copenhagen, I'm uh, working with a very interesting um, energy living lab. Um, it was out in a in a very large uh, real estate real estate development uh, arm of Copenhagen. And they really want to learn from from all the new buildings how they were performing energy wise. They were also uh, interesting to to listening to to the communities, how were they using the the new city district? So they were really tapping into the individual household. And quite many people were interested to participate in it. But they need to be like an economic incentive for them to to get involved. So the Danish Energy Agency, uh, they made a like a national fund of around twenty million US dollar to create this uh, energy lab uh, North Harbor. And these are the experience I can uh, I can share with with you and 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 with others. So you can be inspired by the methodology and the business plan behind some of the living living labs which have existed for seven, eight years in Denmark. So now you can see uh, your PowerPoint. So why don't you uh, explain about that? Yes. Um, first of all, uh, thank you so much for giving me the, the floor to um, to present some of the views from uh, from Denmark, from the the Danish ecosystem, and uh, I think it's uh, very encouraging to um, to to see uh, how how they do are, are working with uh, with Living Lab concept, and I really share the the same view that that these type of Living Labs need to be demand driven. They need to be either a city or government or region which are facing an issue korean living lab network uh, in korea as i said there is an issue uh, the issue is that uh, that the world's eyes are on korea and how uh, how korea are acting on sustainability how they are acting towards meeting the net zero 2050 targets. For uh, for just a few weeks ago, uh, the government announced that they are uh, working towards being CO2 neutral 
in, uh, in, in 2050. This is absolutely amazing that we have so many governments around the world which are meeting this target. And right now we are waiting a little bit to actually see how does it look like? What is the roadmap? How are Korean planning to, to, to do it, to, to do this? So I think from, from, from your prime minister point of view, this is an exercise which are calling all men's on deck, both researchers, the private sectors, the civil society, everybody in the Korean society. And Denmark and Korea have a long track record of, of, of good and solid uh, collaboration. Uh, the Danish government and the Korean government have established the, the Green Growth Alliance. It was established in uh, 2011. And, and this type of alliance are very, very uh, strong and mean a lot to the Danish government. It also means that we can be honest and direct on how uh, Korean are doing even better on, on sustainability on the green side. And I think now with this commitment of being uh, net zero in 2050, uh, with, um, with commitment to move towards more uh, sustainability, we can really try to push that this uh, commitment need to be legal binding there need to be breakdowns on climate targets already by 2030. And I do see that cities are playing a major role to make this happen. The cities are the engine of innovation. The cities are the platform where we can actually showcase how does uh, innovation look like. And especially the whole platform for showcasing this innovation are the living labs. From a city perspective, uh, our capital city, Copenhagen, in 2011, they committed that they want to be the first CO2 neutral capital in the world by 2025. Very, very ambitious targets. Everybody was like laughing and said, this is not possible. But everything is possible if you can make, if you can break down your targets and you can do like step, step to step activities. And this is what they have done with the Copenhagen Climate Plan 2025. This is a working document which are continuously moving, setting up new projects, setting up new partnerships and setting up measurements on how these uh, many different uh, projects are evolving. But the most possible uh, positive thing is that you can track the progress of these activities. So Copenhagen municipalities, they know exactly where they are behind or what do they need to do more. And uh, in 2018, I was to the annual uh, climate target and they discovered that the, that the Danish Technical University have miscalculated out some of, uh, some of the, the baseline data on, on, on mobility. And of course, that was a, was a major issue. They were sent like two years back on their uh, mobility targets, on the green mobility target. But they managed to discover it in time. So now they are investing heavily to accelerate the uh, green mobility in, uh, in Copenhagen. And just for, for a week ago, they announced a uh, hundred million uh, US dollar in investment just for, for biking. How can we bring more people on our bikes? How can we secure that when you're going from A to B, you take your bike instead of your car? So, so, so I, what I'm trying to say here is that these type of very detailed uh, work plans is definitely essential if we should work with these living labs. So we know what we do, who are engaged, um, how do we track progress of our work? 
and how do we actually showcase um, our achievements to to the society and how do we engage with the society and i really encourage you to take a look at the Copenhagen uh, climate plan to get inspired to actually see how detailed that breakdown that work plan is so it's just an inspiration for us to move forward next uh, slide living labs is uh, is uh, is a weird breed uh, it has been going on for like uh, 10 15 years around the world and it's very unique. Uh, it's unique from city to city. It's uh, unique from what you can actually do. Uh, it's it can include it can include all environmental aspects. But as uh, President Co said in his presentation, there is two things which drive these living labs, and that's the local demand, and then the business model. If we cannot make uh, these type of living labs uh, commercial viable and try to see a greater purpose of testing all these technologies, then it's not uh, making sense to continue. It, but this financially model can be many things. One of the one of the uh, one of the living lab ideas or concepts I've tried to push in Korea is establishing an air quality network where we are taking different uh, technologies and installing it in real time in different settings in cities where there is peak of air pollution, traffic generated air pollution and a high background value of air pollution. How can the technologies improve the, the local air quality situation? You can use different type of facades element to put on uh, skyscrapers. You can, uh, by these facade element, um, reduce uh, particle, particle matter in air, uh, reduce NOx by, by having a, like a chemical uh, composition in, in the facades element, which can take the air pollution out. The business model of this type of air quality living lab is not straightforward. The business model is actually to showcase how does it provide positive externalities to Korean society. The decision makers, they need to know that cleaning the air will improve the productivity in Korea. It will reduce the numbers of people going to hospitals with respiratory illnesses. It will reduce the people not being able to work because they have bronchitis, because they have uh, nausea, headaches, because of air pollution. These type of, of uh, externalities are very, very important to include in all the business model that we are working. So it's not just like a monitoring value. It's also about the society and how we improve life quality, better health, and make people more happier with our technologies. So again, let me stress, Living Lab is a lot of things. There are two drivers, and that's uh, the demand and the business model. And then the in between is something which are negotiable. Next slide. So let me give you uh, three to four different examples, uh, which are ongoing, which are installed and are operational in, uh, in, uh, in Denmark. In Copenhagen municipality, as part of the climate plan, they have a target on increasing biodiversity in, in the city. The biodiversity are making people more interested to go out in the open air or out in the open environment. Um, biodiversity are trying to stimulate children, young people to be using the, the, the urban space. But concrete are everywhere in the city. 
So Copenhagen are having a target of planting 100,000 trees within the next five years. They are targeting uh, increase of biodiversity by 15%. That's uh, flora and fauna. And they are trying to create new spaces in the city where, um, where we are working with nature-based solutions to avoid that uh, our city will be flooded if there is a, a heavy rain episode like the one you discovered, like the one Seoul discovered this summer with 55 days with pure rain. How can we use nature natural systems to avoid that the city will be flooded. So Copenhagen municipality and, 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 and I myself have been involved in setting up this uh, living lab from, for urban nature. We found a, a street um, where it was very deprived or where there were low life quality in the, in the urban space. And we created a tons of uh, different um, uh, nature-based solution. We had the uh, green walls established on the on the facades to to reduce noise from traffic, but also to to tap into the grey water from from rain for irrigation of the green wall to prevent that the rain was going into the sewage system and to uh, to prevent that there were peak overload um, at the sewage treatment plant. And now we actually see we have measured uh, birds and insects and, and the green biomass. And we can actually see that people are using their, 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 their urban space more. They are spending more time outside because they are curious uh, on all the new initiative. These, uh, these projects have, I've seen them a lot in, 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 in Korea. And, and I think Korea have done something absolutely great with, the, with some of the old roads, which have the, turned into parks. And right now, Copenhagen municipality are actually looking towards Seoul on how that have been done because they have also these uh, uh, flyovers, which they want to tear down and turn them into to, to natural parks. So I, I see this type of uh, living lab for urban nature uh, as a kind of a mutual beneficial platform for, for both our cities. I think we have small solutions which perhaps can be integrated in, uh, in Korea. And I definitely see a, a huge desire from many cities in Copenhagen to actually learn on how you have diverted uh, some of your old uh, highways into uh, streams, into na uh, into nature parks, and stuff like that. So, so this is uh, one of the one of the concepts where we can use the, the nature natural systems to reduce air pollution, to reduce uh, vibration, uh, noise levels, uh, light pollution, etc. But also another thing which uh, Korea are, are, are amazing to do is uh, the whole digitalization and platform. And uh, in my dialogue with uh, Aarhus municipality, the second largest city in, in Copenhagen, with Copenhagen and with another city called Weile, they all said to me, we would really like to learn how uh, Korea and the Korean society are working with digitalization, with AI and with IoT. And when I'm looking into the Korean New Deal, artificial intelligence, uh, Internet of Things, and, and, and data dams are definitely um, some of the investment objects. And I think this is uh, something we have tried to, to, to create different type of uh, digital uh, urban spaces uh, in, in Denmark, but we haven't really succeeded yet. 
in Kø- in Aarhus, uh, Aarhus municipality, they have um, turned uh, one of their biggest playground into a digital playground to actually stimulate uh, how the children are using the different tools by putting like a, a digital a digital device into it so they can see how fast that they're running how many times that they are spinning with the wheel you know how much energy that they are creating when they are using the swing really trying to work with digitalization and learning in a public playground and in Denmark we are investing a lot of um, money to make our cities also for for the young generation in korea i see a lot of um, um, gymnastic equipment in parks but i don't see so many playgrounds and i really think that uh, playgrounds can stimulate to a better life it's a place where children can learn from each other but also be more active and more healthier. And I see that Korea could learn something from the way that we are uh, using our playground. And perhaps more playgrounds will create more kids. And I think that is something uh, Korea need <laughs> in, the, in the future with a decline of, of, of population. So this is a, a, another space I would really like to explore. Could we work with um, a living lab concept specific on playgrounds? Perhaps a digital playground. We have some experience from, from Aarhus at least. Uh, another uh, interesting project which have been type of established which i see there are interfaces with uh, some of the korean uh, challenges is how do we distribute our renewable energy uh, back to the net if i'm as a private household owner produce more energy that i actually consume i would like to sell it back to the net in korea that's a big obstacle in denmark it is possible but the amount of money I'm getting back is not really uh, a good uh, financially initiative for me. So Copenhagen Solution Lab created uh, what they called uh, the Energy Block Living Lab, where they uh, connected a whole group of buildings together, mixed use, residential with corporates, also with public institutions. And on the rooftop, they installed a lot of solar PV. And by using blockchain technology, they were actually able to get a very solid uh, business model on how to share the renewable energy that they were producing. And some of the co corporates, um, they could actually see that the energy price fluctuated around, around the day. So some of the, the companies uh, in that uh, uh, block of, of houses, they decided to turn their production into, uh, uh, into a 24 hour operation. And, um, and the most energy consuming activities was uh, of course planned to, to be over the night where the electricity, electricity was uh, cheaper. It was stored in, in batteries and could be utilized uh, during the evening. So the, the company actually produced uh, their product much cheaper. The residential owners, which installed the solar PV, had a better return of investment for the, ins uh, for, uh, for the installation. And, and the whole kind of decentralized uh, energy block approach was quite unique. Uh, the return of investment for the installation was uh, 3.5 years. And now Copenhagen municipality have measured and weighed uh, all the initiative uh, from the project and are now scaling it out. And I think this is a very uh, successful type of uh, uh, blockchain AI uh, technologies, which have been shown successful and something which could perhaps stimulate how uh, 
private household are investing in more renewable energy and are, are sharing it uh, among themselves. So uh, what I just presented here was a few um, few cases from, from, from Copenhagen. I have around uh, 10 or 12 different type of living labs and I don't mind to to put them all into a PowerPoint presentation and share it with you. And I think uh, perhaps our first step in our network should actually be a kind of a publication where we do it jointly, written in English and Korean to explain our different, uh, our many different uh, living labs experiments. Why have we installed them? What have the benefit been? Who are the stakeholders? What is the business model behind it? Then we can be equally uh, inspired by each other. And allow me to change subject a little bit. Allow me to talk about how Korea in the future could create new business to look at a more intelligent view on waste. Waste is a resource which often are not seen as a profitable resource. The Korean society are massively user of um, plastic, of cardboard, of all type of um, packaging. It's a high uh, consuming society. And I see today that you have been working a lot with upcycling. I think it's second to none what you have done on upcycling. But waste and upcycling uh, is very, very good. Um, but there are also other ways to work with, uh, with waste and turn waste into profit. And ICDK will, for next year, uh, work a lot on circular economy and try to test and demonstrate circular economy. How does it work in Korea? What is the obstacles? And especially the cities. I would like to, uh, to touch how, do, uh, how can we use the cities as an acceleration for, for adopting this circular economy mindset. Because the cities can act and create these type of uh, demonstration projects where we can engage with researchers and the private sector to test new circular economy business models. This is already happening around the world and it's also happening in, in Korea. By, but by working together, I think we can really accelerate it. And this is why I, in end of uh, February, will host the first uh, circular, economy, circular economy conference, uh, circular economy cities conference with uh, six trade cities. And I really, really hope that Daejeon can be among them. The purpose with the conference is to, uh, to ask the deputy mayor to sign a declaration that he in the future will have a circular, circular economy lens on when he is doing development in his area. And I've collected a catalog of 40 initiatives from around the world on how different cities are working with circular economy. It's very unique. It's very ad hoc. And uh, as with the living labs, everybody can do it in different scales. The city of Amsterdam is probably one of the flagship uh, cities in the world. Uh, they have been really working a lot on... Um, on especially uh, construction sites and how construction waste can be used and utilized for new building material. They have a whole business plan and the city have uh, announced that a certain percentage of all demolition works need to be used for building new materials, new buildings, not just filling in roads, but high profile building components. The capital of, uh, of, uh, of Finland, uh, Helsinki, uh, they are a kind of a second uh, front, front runner on, on circular economy. Right now, they are uh, launching uh, a circular procurement guidelines on how the, 
when uh, when a city are uh, building new right now they are building a new uh, two or three new hospitals and in the procurement uh, plan of these hospitals there is a specific focus that it needs to be waste free this the the hospitals are not going to be uh, operational if uh, if if there will be like dedicated waste streams with, which will go to incineration or to landfill sites that will not be acceptable so already now in the planning phase of the hospitals uh, Helsinki are having very strict targets on how they should turn their hospitals in to, to zero waste hospitals. And when you look at the Korean New Deal, um, 24 hospitals in Korea are going to be refurbished. They're going to be rethink. And I think there is a lot of uh, investment focus on, on how to optimize Korean hospitals. But they need to be considering circular economy and energy consumption and i think that is definitely an, an area i would like to explore more how do we incorporate a circular economy mindset in in, in hospitals and then in, in copenhagen and malmo uh, it will be further explained in my next slide so so please uh, take the next slide copenhagen municipality are really trying to push also the circular economy agenda um in the south harbor area one of the Polish neighborhoods i will i will i will do it short so i will uh <laughs> great thank you <laughs> but it's a really really interesting we are really learning a lot so very good yeah i will i will, I will do it shortly uh copenhagen uh, south harbor they are doing a lot of uh, energy retrofitting of their public housing when they're doing energy retrofitting, they are creating a lot of construction material, bricks, windows, isolation material, uh, wood, and so on. Uh, Copenhagen Municipality, they did an open innovation competition on how to utilize that building material. And these are the results. They turned them into urban uh, garden using only construction waste as the building material. And I think this, uh, this is quite, stunning on how you turn waste into more livable environments and uh, now these urban farms are big tourist attractions it's actually the fourth largest tourist attraction in in Copenhagen nobody have thought that uh, construction waste could be turned into rooftops where communities are meeting where tourists are coming to see the cities next slide in, uh, in, in in the southern part of, of uh, Sweden, uh, they had a surplus of residual heat. And we uh, work with, uh, with an open innovation competition as well. And this is the final, uh, the award winning uh, project to make, um, to make a, like, a, um, uh, like a, a community garden where the residual heat uh, from the city could actually accelerate uh, commercial crops, fish production, uh, and create like a a, a learning a food valley uh, for 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 the city. So this is actually under construction, and they were using um, different type of residual heat, which were not seen as a resource as uh, as all. So, of course, um, with this Living Lab Network, I really hope that we can dream together. We can be inspired by each other. We can learn and develop new type of uh, relationships, demonstrations. So this, we are coming close to Christmas. And this is my Christmas wish for our Korean Danish Living Lab that we are working very physical to show these uh, type of flagship projects and that we are involving uh, our greater society when we are doing our innovation work, that we use uh, waste uh, as a profit and that we measure our sustainability um, approaches. 
And of course, that we are using the, the different SDGs so we can document and showcase the greatest society or the world society that what we are doing are measurable, are uh, giving value to the greatest society and to Korea, and that we are creating money out of our innovation. So let me let that be my 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 words for for this long presentation. Sorry to take so much time. Thank you. Very great. Um, actually, uh, we learn a lot, and it is really really um, um, wonderful ideas are involved. Especially, uh, I was really inspired by uh, the uh, digital playground, and further, um, your the original hit uh, usage um, uh, could uh, recall me about the, uh, the Paris, uh, the subway heat uh, usage. And also yeah. this is another yeah. circular economy, it's a big event. And um, I thought that how can we use, or how can we adopt that concept to the Korean uh, uh, system? Likewise, uh, the, your residual heat usage would be a, another great thing. I believe that current, um, the, our Mr. Kim, Dr. Kim can uh, also uh, advise that kind of things because he is currently working in an in, in energy institute. So, uh, uh, Dr. Kim, can you briefly introduce about the, your uh, the thought and uh, ideas regarding the, our discussion of the, the, the new living and network establishment? Thank you. Sure. Yep. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to say that um, it is a very pleasure uh, to be here with a, a the international members and uh, I'm very thankful for having a chance to give a brief introduction of uh, my institute and uh, moreover I'm very uh, thank you to the president of this step uh, Dr. Go for his effort uh, to bring out the international cooperation for Daejeon City through the uh, realizing uh, the living lab Actually, the frankly speaking, Living Lab is a very uh, a new concept to me, but I'm, I'm enjoying uh, to learn about the new concept through this uh, uh, international dialogue. Uh, well, um, the first impression of hearing about the Living Lab uh, for Daejeon City is um, I would be a uh, uh, being a contributor in terms of a technical support, but also uh, I think that the, I could be a, a recipient of the benefit as a citizen of Daejeon City. So it is a good news for us, uh, for me. Okay, um, the, without further ado, I'm going to explain a really uh, simply and uh, conceptually about it, the my institute, Korea Institute of Energy Research. Uh, we have uh, several local branches. Our head, we are head, headquartered in Daejeon, which is the really a central part of South Korea. And the Daejeon is known as a science and technology city. The biggest uh, local branch is in Jeju Island. We call it uh, Jeju Global uh, Research Center, uh, expecting that they literally it would be a global uh, cooperation center. And the Jeju Global Research Center is a specialized in wind energy and marine energy. And the second one is in Buan on the Western coastline and specialized in the fuel cell laboratory. As I, as I heard from uh, the crews in uh, Buan Center, their uh, facility is a top three class in the world, uh, in the hydrogen and fuel cell uh, field. And uh, we have uh, Ulsan, which is a very large industrial uh, complex and specialized in um, the photovoltaic uh, research. And Gwangju, which is located in the middle of a very large uh, grain belt so that it is specialized in the bioenergy R&D. Um, I can name more, more than uh, several hundred of uh, research items of uh, my institute, but 
we are very specialized in new and renewable energy. So photovoltaics, solar thermal convergence, and fuel cell, hydrogen, marine energy, and wind energy. And I'm in charge of uh, uh, new and renewable energy resource uh, map a laboratory. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking charge of a resource assessment part. And talking about the global uh, collaborations, as you see on the slide, we are collaborating with the totally 47 organizations uh, in 25 countries. But this collaboration is at least five years for short and to the more than 20 years for long. So we have a very solid uh, international collaboration. And the Denmark in, is actually in the middle of, um, since we started the uh, renewable energy research, we've been cooperating with uh, the Danish uh, government, Danish uh, uh, universities and institute. So but let me share a little bit of my personal experience of collaborating with the Danish side. Uh, I have a very close and old friend in the DTU uh, Wind Energy. She's in charge of a, a DTU Wind Energy Dean. And we try to receive the grant for the international networking program between well, actually, this is a multilateral collaboration, Denmark, Korea, and Japan. And uh, yeah, Ostert is a Danish uh, university. Uh, and my um, friend, the, the Professor uh, Hesega, we've been uh, working together tightly. Uh, for instance, uh, she hosted the special uh, issue of a uh, reputable journal recently and uh, invited me as a the co uh, editor. So in the next time, I, in the next year, I was supposed to organize a special issue editor and uh, vice versa. I invited her to be my uh, guest editor. Okay. <laughs> and, and, uh, sorry, can I just say one thing? Okay, sure. That, that uh, Charlotte was actually my evaluator for my thesis when I graduated. Oh, really? So I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, what a coincidence. <laughs> uh, well, what a small world it is. Okay, it is. this is my <laughs> last slide. Uh, last slide. Um, um, you guys so wanted funny. to know about, yeah, wanted to know about the, the Green New Deal of Korea and the renewable energy dissemination plans, et cetera. So let me uh, share uh, uh, about the schematics of these policies. Well, um, the first line shows the uh, um, legal binding force of uh, renewable energy, uh, which is energy basic plan. So it is uh, established in five uh, cons consecutive years, and uh, we are under the third basic plan. And uh, the subsidiary uh, plan mm, below this basic plan, national basic plan, is a so-called new and renewable energy basic plan. So what you heard about the Korean's renewable energy development, such like uh, renewable energy 3020, which means that the uh, uh, supplying uh, electricity with renewables by 2030, uh, in short, that is renewable energy 3020, uh, or a uh, Green New Deal. And uh, our president recently uh, announced the net zero by 2050. All these are uh, how can I say? It is uh, something like uh, uh, proclamation, proclamation, or declaration of uh, uh, national uh, policy and direction, rather than uh, e e the uh, action plans based on uh, the legal bindings. 
so uh, what is important is all these uh, announcement and uh, declaration would be revised or well it could be cancelled depending on the political uh, situations but what is a solid is uh, what is declared in the basic plan uh, because it is based on the legal law uh, so what does my institute do for uh, the renewable energy uh, of the korea is uh, we are uh, we're compiling and the uh, establishing the new and renewable energy basic plan under the supervision of the ministry of trade industry and energy together with the korea energy economic institute so we've been um, helping the government to set up the new and renewable energy basic plan. In this plan, uh, well, actually the fifth new and renewable energy basic plan was supposed to be announced um, about a year ago, but because of a renewable energy 3020 and green new deal, and recently net zero uh, declaration, uh, we might to delay a, the public and official announcement of a new and renewable energy basic plan to accommodate all these uh, agenda uh, into the compilation. Uh, the more of uh, we are publishing a new and renewable energy white paper, uh, the most important part of this white paper is a, the potential assessment, how much we Korea have a renewable energy potential, such like uh, uh, 300 gigawatt PV potential or something like that. Uh, so we are able to develop uh, the PV among mm, our potential. So a scientific and uh, accurate estimation of the potential is the beginning of uh, setting a national plan. So all these things are we, my institute is responsible for. Uh, but I might to uh, ask apology in not talking detail about the new and renewable energy basic plan because uh, we haven't yet uh, uh, publicly announced uh, this plan. Uh, so I'm uh, under just something like embargo status. Uh, but uh, the net zero plans and green new deal stuffs will be uh, contained uh, in the new and renewable energy basic plan, which is supposed to be uh, officially announced sooner or later. Okay, uh, thank you for hearing my talk. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kim. Actually. Uh, this is uh, really, really great for us to first um, uh, step into the, our green uh, renewable and the new uh, energy plan. And believe, we believe that the, uh, as, as we move toward our living and network, that would be fantastic to understand better. And then perhaps um, after uh, uh, ending the embargo situation, then we may know better about the, the detailed plan. And in, in the case, we can have another the uh, conversation together. So actually, um, our the Korean New Deal includes basically uh, the digital New Deal and Green New Deal. And I believe that um, uh, this um, living network should combine both. So in the case, mm -hmm. we can develop a very strategic plan for our coming uh, future years. And I believe this would be a great uh, initiative together uh, to discuss about that. And I believe in depth purpose, uh, we may have a, a, a little bit a, uh, a, a, a um, uh, pendable and tangible uh, plan together. So I would like to um, uh, add um, uh, another the things from uh, Mr. Vangsubo uh, regarding his uh, work plan uh, 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 yeah. already uh, he suggested. But yeah, go ahead. I, I, I think it's it, it perhaps uh, overdoing it a little bit, uh, giving me too much, taking too much time to, to talk. I, I, I think it's it's probably better if we uh, discuss it uh, among us, what is our next step and how could we move forward? Because I, I think from the presentations that we all 
very much aligned. It was very, very interesting to to hear about the renewable uh, energy plan. And I think it's, it's fitting very much into what uh, President Cole was, pres- uh, was mentioned. And when we're looking at the Korean New Deal, uh, hydrogen, the uh, the conversion to a hydrogen society is one of the key aspects. We have uh, we have a, a big target on renewable in it, or, or sorry um, energy retrofitting of public buildings, and among that, around three thousand schools. Um, so I think we all agree that that we need to develop our uh, collaboration specific on topics which are mentioned by the the korean new deal uh, and we could narrow it more down to just be looking into the energy uh, side there are plenty of of uh, of things to do in that respect and i think if we are working further with uh, with energy I think that's also vice because the, the the business model behind these living lab concepts working on energy are more clear cut than if you are working with more social orientated uh, living lab uh, approaches. So so uh, the, the the presentation I had was was just helping that discussion on the way, but I think we are already completely aligned on 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 how we can work to together mm-hmm. so i would i i think i i think we should uh, just in 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 the group perhaps discuss how do we move forward what sure, what what sure. what should we do yeah uh, as a kickoff meeting i think that's another good thing we can discuss because uh, i thought that you already uh, include in the second work plan about your thought to about our our next plan but the uh, well, that, that can be shared later, a little bit later. But um, if uh, if we uh, continue about our discussion regarding the our our this steps plan, and me, even in myself in terms of the circular economy and our next year plan, also if Dr. Kim can add uh, the, another another effort uh, regarding this um, the network plan, that would be great. So why don't you first start, uh, uh, President Ko? Yeah, I think uh, the first aim of the, our communication is to share um, our living lab project experiences or Danish living lab projects. Uh, and also, secondly, I'd like to build a new core project uh, between Korea and Danish. Um, living labs, uh, hopefully participate, making a participation uh, from community, uh, many communities and uh, science technology organizations, including um, Korea Energy Institute Research. And then I think uh, um, I, I'd like to raise, raise a question to Peter. Uh, first of all, oh, what are the period of the living uh, lab projects and mm. uh, urban nature or uh, circular economy or uh, many many things very impressive and interesting so in in korea's yeah. case the living lab project is very short period time it's, uh, okay four okay. months or six months or something like that <laughs> so oh, wow <laughs> yeah right in, uh, in 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 Denmark, um, I mentioned this uh, energy lab North Harbor, uh, which was like a massive investment, costing uh, twenty million US dollar. Uh, that was running over over five five years. And and now this is actually finished, and they are actually searching for how they can. Uh, internationalize it, how they can perhaps set it up in different uh, different other regions. And, and one of the ideas I, I, I had, and I'm trying to push that, is actually bringing that living lab uh, network 
and boil it down so it works specific for schools in Korea. So we can uh, work with uh, energy, energy flow, energy systems, renewable energy production, specific on all the schools which are going to be energy retrofitted. I call this uh, project the uh, Smart Energy Schools in Korea. And we have been uh, discussing it with different uh, organizations. The governor of uh, Chukchuk Namdo have kind of said he would like to move forward with identifying some schools where we could actually roll it out. But we can also find schools in Daejeon. For me, this have um, a very great potential where we can both work with specific technologies, but we can also include the civil society. And this project on smart energy schools, uh, I, I see that it's supporting the, the Korean Green Deal. It's a project which could have a time horizon of two to three years. Perhaps uh, six months is a little bit too, too little because we need to have the like the seasonal variation. How does the, the project work during the winter? How does it work during the summer when it's raining, you know, <laughs> when the schools are closed and stuff like that? So I think sometimes it's, it's good to have at least all the seasons, perhaps over two to three years. I totally agree on, on that right. the uh, ideas and uh, plans because uh, as we um, provide in this, in this, this moment to uh, Daejeon pro uh, the Living Net Project or the Citizens Project, it just uh, requires the three months. So when what they have to do is just a plan and testing for 30 persons, that's all. So I think in this case, they, we cannot evaluate what they, uh, well, what would, um, their their thought will actually be accomplished? So it is a little bit difficult for us to prepare something. So we need sort of a long uh, breathe uh, uh, to uh, receive a valuable uh, the results. I totally agree on that. Yeah. But, but 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 sometimes sometimes also uh, like a good inception phase or pilot phase can last for three months, where we can you know, try to work with it for a short while and identify, you know, what, what, what is the, the legal barriers, you know, why, what should we do to catalyze the issues that we are facing mm. so we can identify the, the, the bricks in, you know, how does they fit together? So this, uh, this smart entity schools are also something which we can kind of pilot it. And again, one of the aspects in the Korean New Deal is uh, the digital platform, the digital twin, the AI. And what we try to do right now, the, Korea, uh, the, the Danish MFA, they gave me some money so I could perhaps establish like a virtual uh, platform, a digital twin of one school. So we could like, electronically manipulate the different seasons, the different energy flows, you know, how does it work when it's, when the schools are half full, full during the summer, during the winter, uh, these, these type of aspects. So, so sometimes we can also manipulate the, 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 the platform. And I think this is something Korea are very, very good at creating these type of, of digital twins. I really strongly believe that our living lab networks could be fast accelerated if we created it into a, a type of a, of a digital twin and then make the experience, learn from that and then install it in real life. I think in, in my head that, that sounds uh, sensible to, to, to work that way. Well, actually, what we propose, yeah, Go ahead. we actually propose uh, together with the DTU was exactly what did, did you say? Uh, we propose the uh, establishing kind of a virtual 
education environment considering the uh, coronavirus situation. So and not visiting each other's places, but uh, we can do all the things under the virtual environment. So teaching the students together and uh, preparing, uh, developing uh, the uh, online uh, education material together and sharing uh, the students together. That was the basic concept of our proposal. So you are on the same uh, line of uh, the idea, even though the uh, heading direction was the same. So if we uh, concentrate our idea into the one direction, then we can realize the intangible uh, achievement. Okay, that is what I'm looking forward to hearing. Uh, Great. I, I, I think that, that that's really, really encouraging. Just one, one, one question. Uh, I know that they have been awarded now, these uh, international research yeah, programs. Yeah, yeah. And then you were no, not uh, successful. Yeah, we but didn't. What, what, I would, what, what I would really, really like to do, I will speak with the with the with the UFM, uh, the the Danish mm -hmm. uh, Ministry of, of Education, and I mm -hmm. will uh, I will try to convince them that we need to find money for that uh, yeah. that research network. So mm -hmm. please uh, let us have a, a dialogue after, and I will try to to see if I can secure yeah, okay. some some funding yeah. for making that uh, collaboration uh, happen. Okay, sure, sure. The Dr. Even... Hasega was very disappointed because uh, we yeah. thought that we are talented and well prepared and uh, eligible for receiving the pr fund, but uh, she doesn't know what was our uh, the weak point. Uh, by the way, I will, uh, I will speak with, I will, yeah. I will speak with them and, I, and I will do it, not, and not, not just because he gave me, a, not, not just because he gave me a good grade in my, in my, <laughs> uh, in my thesis, <laughs> but uh, because I believe in the idea. Right. Even Dr. <laughs> okay. Kim, um, yeah. actually, as you see, uh, this system, that this is really, um, the, uh, the helpful to communicate to each other because uh -huh. when you talk. And then when I talk and we talk to each other, the voice is still alive, which is very important okay, in communication. Sure, sure. But the, if you yeah. use Zoom or WebEx and others, that will be broken and then we cannot hear each other. So this is totally different mm -hmm. system. And then to that mm -hmm. reason, even though we didn't, as we see that he, we didn't prepare anything in advance. We just, I received just a, a simple information about you, but we are currently working very smoothly. This is really totally different. <laughs> Even though we are currently live abroad, uh, live streaming out now, and then you may see it okay. later in YouTube, but this is really, really important in terms of education. So what we can uh, the demonstrate to your research and education to Danish uh, government and even our the government, I think this is really, really important. What kind of a platform which is light but effective? Mm -hmm. That's important. Okay. So I would like to say something like this. Yeah, this is a, a very much important point. Uh, we need to communicate the process itself in details, so including what kind of difficulties to develop the living naps projects and uh, any kinds of hurdles to overcome. So um, if we could um, living net projects in the field of schools, um, the smart energy schools, as you mentioned, um, we need to communicate uh, so many government departments and the local um, authorities as well, and the uh, parents and many students uh, together. It's a, and the, with a long period, two or three years, so um, we need to develop the appropriate planning uh, process to participate so many uh, different uh, kinds of actors. So uh, we need to communicate more in details about the process, uh, development process of living naps. So, uh, so we could uh, develop our core project together uh, I yeah. am trying to suggest different type of living naps 
uh, for long, long uh, period of time uh, with um, convergent issues. Uh, I think uh, the Green New Deal or energy uh, field is good approach for the different types of living naps in central government and local government as well, including the Ministry of Education. Um, so uh, it could be a uh, good, uh, great efforts uh, for us to uh, make uh, co-sharing and uh, um, co-building uh, together, living them network and uh, um, the experiences together. So um, I think, uh, uh, why don't you suggesting or delivering more about uh, your, your uh, experiences, cases, focusing on the process itself, uh, how to okay. overcome or uh, how to evolve uh, with many actors overcoming the difficulties and hurdles. Yeah? So, yeah. of course, uh, I, I could share more in details about the uh, Korea's living net projects or Dajan cities and cases together. But uh, that, that's, uh, and the next time we could uh, develop more focusing on the Green New Deal and energy, uh, finding out some um, actors and organizations or project funding together. So, okay. I think th th this, is, uh, this is very clear for me. Um, I don't mind to take that uh, responsibility to, uh, to, to make a, a, a breakdown of a work plan specific for the smart energy uh, school project idea that I can share with you. I can have that uh, ready by the first week of, of January. I would also like to, uh, to invest and find uh, money to actually make a kind of a joint publication uh, so we can get some uh, specific living lab described. And as you are saying, trying to describe them in a way where we identify what have the barrier been? What have they done to catalyze these uh, challenges? Um, try to make a kind of a harmonized uh, framework of a two-page presentation of A to 10 Korean living labs and A to 10 Danish living labs, focusing on energy-related issues. And I, uh, I think I can find uh, find money in my own system. The publication will be greater if uh, if if you can match that funding I can identify. And uh, we together can make that uh, publication. And also, when we have that publication ready, when we have the work plan for the smart energy school. I would really, really like to meet you face to face uh, in the middle of uh, of February, perhaps, perhaps in uh, Daejeon, uh, for a half day seminar, uh, so we can discuss this. I, I, th this platform is absolutely fantastic, but meeting you face to face will definitely also making a huge different, I think, for our further collaboration. Okay. Yeah, uh, actually, due to that reason, um, as, as uh, President Cole mentioned, that the, uh, the process, which involves many the uh, actual and uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the citizens uh, for their one project could be shared together. That would be fantastic. So January, mid-January or mid-February, we can have a, a several chances to offer that kind of opportunities. When you are here together, then we can connect yeah. to Copenhagen and even the, the United States and also Seoul uh, here in Daejeon. Then we can just uh, uh, have a, another conversations or two, uh, a few conversations together with the citizens. That would be, I think, perfect. Another important part yes. regarding the other procedure, uh, the protocols also really, really important. What we have to uh, keep uh, to, to, uh, to make our citizens safe when they, uh, involve, they are involved in, in this, the, the, uh, the Living Lab project. So 
uh, especially for children. So in the KHD, what kind of yeah. protocols are you, you already prepared? And the, what we are trying to prepare, that would be another important issue. So we need to also talk about the protocol too. So that would be great. Um, well, time Thank is already uh, done, and this is, uh, as, I, as, I, as we always feel, <laughs> two hours is uh, always <laughs> short. But uh, yeah, Peter, go ahead. <laughs> I, I, I just need to say one thing. It's just one idea when we're talking about the children. Perhaps we should have a, like a youth energy summit in Korea mm. in May during the yeah. P4G summit. Youth energy summit. I would That's love that. Idea. That's a great. That's a fantastic idea, right? So <laughs> let's let's try to make a that kind okay. of plan. Yeah, I mean, this is really <laughs> a good idea. Yeah. Even not just for the uh, the youth, in the case, perhaps the, our high school students or middle school students may be very, very interested right. in this project. Mm -hmm. And also, I think uh, the care are also really, really interested in the, yeah. this kind of things because we, anyway, uh, transfer our ideas to our youth. So this is really, yeah. really important in terms of education. So I think this is a fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, that is a more effective idea rather than diversifying in the uh, living laboratory concept. So what I want to bring back in mind, uh, I picked up the cures that the uh, a living lab and energy issue and uh, energy school, okay, and contribute to the local community. Uh, so I will keep thinking about the what would be a more tangible and more effective idea you know, in the boundary of these keywords. Okay. And moreover, was a very uh, informative and helpful meeting uh, that I haven't expected, but uh, I enjoyed this meeting very much. And thank well, you thank for you so <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I will send you an email um, you. Uh, regarding the, our next <laughs> plan. But the, uh, mm -hmm. in the meantime, please enjoy this holiday season. And just forget okay. everything, <laughs> and then let's yeah. let's meet again in next uh, January. All right? That's okay. great. I'd all like right. to say Merry Christmas, yeah. Christmas. Right. Right. everybody. Bye -bye. Yeah. Any uh, audiences okay. also very thanks uh, thankful for your watching our videos. So right. see you next time. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Bye. Happy New Year. Bye bye. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Bye bye. Okay. See you next time.